Hi, everybody. Welcome to the second segment, episode 246, Sold with Updike Pew. I'm Jeff Updike. I'm Weston Pew, and today we thought we'd talk a little bit about who you're going to call. Oh my goodness, you worked long and hard on that I title. I did, I did. Woo-wee! Got the music to go with it, too. Oh, anyway. In the spirit of Halloween. The purpose of having this conversation is to talk about what are the items that you really need to call a professional on. A lot of people do the DIY uh, project, and there are a lot of things you can do on your own. I learned a lot about what I've learned in construction over the years or in caring for a home through trial and tribulation, but I think I've also figured out mm-hmm. where I where I need to draw the line and where I call okay, the professional. Before we go any further on the segment, what is the one thing that you did that you did DIY that you learned the biggest? Ooh. Ooh, that's that's interesting. I do Oh, I know I can tell you what it was. I can tell you I never need to I never need I never pay, I should never pick paint colors. Interesting. I had a house on Alden that Eric and I were redoing. We bought it from this this bought it from an estate. It's a little bitty, I don't know, thousand square foot, two bedroom, one bath house. Okay. And we completely redid this house. And the guy uh, Michael that we that I used to use to pick paint color all the time had gone off to ride an elephant in India. I, you know who I'm talking about, and he was the guy who would always come out. I'd pay him a couple hundred bucks to come out, and he'd tell me what color to paint. Well, he was gone for three months, and I didn't know it, so I picked a paint color. What color I, did you pick? I, I, some white color. Oh, yeah. Was it yellow? Painted it, picked a different color, painted This is the whole exterior of the house. Painted it, painted it a third time after he got back in town. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, that was that was my limit. <laughs> I took and changed out my thermostat one time and did not turn off the electricity for my HVAC Ooh. unit. Mm. Yeah. You have to replace a motherboard on that one. Mm-hmm. Well, you live and you learn. One of the things that we want to bring up, and this is actually because we actually have a client working with them and discussing this. And a lot of times you have foundation that you know needs to have work done. And your first inclination is to call a foundation company. Everybody says, oh, that's what we'll do, thinking that they're going to be a neutral third party. And that really isn't the case because their pay is based on sales. And I feel, you know, it's, a, and it's like, not that bad. Uh, yeah, not at all. But it, but if you need, if you, I feel like every time that you call a foundation company, your house needs foundation work. I'll, there are a couple of exceptions, like, um, Alpha. Alpha Foundation is an exception to that, but from a general perspective, I think you need to bite the bullet, get a structural engineer to come out. They are going to be unbiased. They're not going to try to sell you peers. They're just going to tell you where your house is and what they need to do to stabilize it or right. lift it or whatever. And a lot of times when an engineering company comes out, sometimes you don't even need peers like um, uh, Marissa uh, Fontanez, mm-hmm. uh, Marissa Fontanez, Marissa, and uh, she married her husband, Good. Mm-hmm. Justin. Justin. He actually had a house, and I think it was like a McKinney or Plano, and had like a hump in the middle of the living room. And so we said, call the foundation company. I mean, call the engineering out. And they said they thought it was a water issue under the house and that he needed to have a plumber come out and look at that and then let it dry out. And then six months, they could make a decision on if it needed anything. And it ended up he did not need mm-hmm. any foundation work at all so it is a very interesting thing you really have to if you don't know now you do and if you hear this share it with your friends and family because we might be in a situation soon where there could be some movement in foundations as we uh, change temperatures one of the other topics that we think it is best to call the professional on is tree service Mm -hmm. um it is and and there are a couple of caveats in, in calling the right tree service uh you know getting up in the I used to crawl up in a tree with a chainsaw dangling around, and how I still have both my arms, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And how I'm kept from from cutting a tree down, falling on a house, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Those are two huge issues. You, I would. It is the season right now that it is time to trim your trees back. It is great to do that before we get into the spring storm season. Uh, also, it's a really good time for you to look through and see that there are dead branches that did not make it through this harsh summer that we just came mm-hmm. out of. But these are things that you want the professional to do, that have the rigging, that have the actual tethers to pull limbs and trees away from houses and and uh, 
vehicles. And the other the other caveat in hiring somebody is make sure they're insured. Um, get a copy of their insurance certificate. They will most uh, uh, most people will not have any issue providing that to you because they know having that is a benefit for them. Yep. And then call the insurance company. And make sure it's still in force. Absolutely. So those are the two. The last one is large electrical um, projects. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I just have a spot in my heart for these. If it is something that is arcing, if it is something that the breaker won't continually stay on, these are issues for you not to play with it, mm -hmm. but to actually seek out someone before something larger happens and could be catastrophic. Yeah, or uh, you know, a lot of times people will find that there is one switch that heats up over time, and if you feel that happening, that is not normal. No. That is not normal. So call your electrician, have them come out and figure out what that issue is. Um, it, 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 and what is it, 70% of the house fires are caused by electrical issues? It's a really large number. I'm not making that up. And I'm not saying, like, we had clients that were on Drujan and they actually had an outlet in the master bedroom that actually heated up. And I don't know that there was an issue, but they were smart enough that they actually turned the breaker off and noticed how hot it was. Then they called the fire department and basically it had almost started a house fire. So these are real live issues. And I know that we are coming into a season where we're going to be plugging in more outdoor lights, mm -hmm. more Christmas trees. If that breaker keeps tripping, there's a reason. There is. <laughs> Call someone. Do not attempt to do it yourself. So we hope you found this helpful today. If there's any other topics that you want us to talk about, if you want us to expand on this even more, or if you've got something coming up that you want our opinion on, should you hire a professional, give us a call. We'd be happy to help. And just remember, we want to be your realtors for life. When you're ready to talk real estate, you can reach us online, by phone, or by text at 214-377-2223. And remember, we want to be a Realtors for Life.